There we go. Hard. Just one more minute here. But I wonder how we we, we got all those people for that live session, but they haven't. They don't come to the uh, the um. Hmm? To the to the, the class. Oh yeah, I mean that time I just opened it up to YouTube. Anyone on YouTube that had the link could come in. That's all. Dang, and I just started streaming. By the way, I just wanted to say hello to everyone just starting uh, that are just watching. Um, I usually do classes on Sundays where I teach uh, Pro Tricks users, uh, the people on the Patreon page. I give them like a free weekly lesson. Um, since it's like uh, it's been a little bit quiet over in Pro Tricks, I think people are just outside or doing stuff. I figured that we would kind of just open it up on the YouTube channel, just kind of show some of the things that we train. I may not be able to answer all the questions because I'm going to be helping Brian a lot of times. Brian's the other guy here. He's one of my students. But I uh, figured I'd just share and show you guys what it's like, what it looks like to have a training session. Oh, what's up, Christina? Christina's also another student. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I just thought we would uh, do a little bit of a training session. Brian's getting something ready, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post this around so it's going to be quiet just for a second here. You can see... This is kind of cool though, because you can kind of see like where Brian's at in his training and things we work on and just how just how a training session kind of looks. We might get a couple more people as well, just depends. Some, it just hit and miss, you know, with regards to these kinds of things. Give me just a moment here. I'm posting this on my Facebook page right now, so it's just going to take a second. Share to a group. Yeah. All right, now we get that breakout going on. Pop out chat. That's All right, now I'm ready. Good, good. Me too. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about what you've been working on. Um, shall we go over a demonstration or should we go over just a rundown of some of the things we've worked on already? Just as a rehash, see if we can pick up some new things as well. All right, so we're all about the doubles. Um, let's just go over a couple of them. Butterfly to a left hand stall to a 3B weave off to the side. Good. And then we'll do a 3B weave to the left and then see if you can turn 180 degrees into a reverse 3B weave to the right. Good, good. Can you try that one more time? Yeah. Just take a look a little bit closer here. See if we can get that smooth. Good, good. There's just a little bit of a delay as you're as you're making that turn. Did you see that? It's usually like when you're making here, there's just like the slight stalling that happens. I'm not sure if it's because it needs to kind of pull itself up around. It's just it's just an ever so slight, but that could be something that could be, let's see. Right, and then make that turn. I see what's happening. It's your right hand. Uh, the chuck is up in the air. Um, you are making you are making the upward pull when you're coming up here, but your, your chuck is kind of held up in the air and it's stalling out when it needs to come to the other side. Um, what I'd like to, let's see, how can we do this right? We're going to take that step. We're going to try to, try to see if you can cross, make your cross a little bit lower by your hip and see if that helps. Okay. Okay. So instead of pulling it up high, cross your arms over as you're turning a little bit lower so you don't you don't get stuck at that height. It's getting there. There's it's still it still works great, man. There's just a little bit of a float that happens. Have you noticed it? 
I, I noticed it a little. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It's nice because <clears throat> you do correct it and you do get it, you do get it working. It just, it kind of just like has a stopping point that happens over there before it moves again. Um, and I think it has to do with the fact that I see one of your chucks is kind of lifted upwards and it just kind of stays there. When you, the cool thing is, is since we have it recorded, you'll be able to, to review that over again, but that'll still work. That still works good. Um, just kind of be aware of that one. I'm not sure what we'll do with that quite yet. Maybe I'll look at it when it's in slow motion here. Okay, next one we'll do a butterfly. And then we'll do two reverse stalls to reverse, or two up stalls to reverse butterfly. Nice, man, that's good. All right, then we'll do, uh, can you do this one? You'll do a butterfly stall and then to crank. Butterfly stall to crank. And then once we go to crank, we're gonna stall the other hand and then it goes to reverse butterfly. Good, and then we're gonna up stall underneath and then it goes to the reverse crank or the opposite direction crank basically. And then we're gonna upstall the other hand and we're back to the original. So upstall with the right hand and we should be back to where we were. We kind of worked on this. I don't think we worked on this too much though, did we? Oh, uh, no, no, sir, no, not this way. Not this way, the way we're doing it now. Cool, this, this is a fun little training exercise too uh, because it takes, you, it takes you through all four positions. So go with the butterfly, go down stall, go to crank, down stall, go to reverse butterfly. Well, it'd be like this. Then up stall goes to crank again. Up stall with your left hand though, not with your right, sorry. Up stall with your left hand. And then you're in this reverse, in this reverse position. Then up stall with your right hand, and we're back to the original butterfly. Nice. And then something you can do with this, no matter what position it's in, if you just think right, left, right, left, you can go right stall, back, left stall, back, right stall, back, left stall, back. And then in one spell motion, it just is a constant flurry of stalls. Which is really nice. Um, it's again, Brian, you, you know this as well as I do. We've, we've gone over this quite a bit, but anytime you do a stall, you change your direction. So whenever you're trying to get into a move, one little stall can kind of change you and get you into what you need to get to. Right. Good, good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we'll do a double stall. So we'll be in crank and we'll just do an up stall, down stall, and then we'll go into a reverse three beat weave where you usually do a regular three beat weave. Good, so crank, double stall, reverse three beat weave. And then we'll do another double stall and then we'll go, we'll do another double stall in the front and then do a regular. So it'll be crank, double stall, reverse, double stall, normal. Just go over this pattern, double stall, reverse, double stall, normal, whoosh, 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 whoosh. Good. That down stall is kind of a little floppy. <laughs> yeah, I did, I, did the other one. I did the left hand on top on that one. Mm -hmm. I see you have a favorite stall side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Whoosh, whoosh. Uh. Good. Something we didn't really cover too much, Brian, was Doing double stalls to make 360 degree turns. I thought this would be kind of fun to do. So you can do this, roll out to your double stall to get to a reverse, but then change 90 degrees. So do your stall and then change direction, and then do your stall and then change direction. Do you see how I'm just, all I'm doing is instead of going from, from here to here, I'm literally going from here. Now I'm thinking I'm gonna stall here, weave, stall, weave. And this will allow me to make turns while I do it too. So again, if I'm doing it over here, you just start thinking you have to do the reverse stall that you would normally do, but you can always, you can always get a stall in and then you'll uh, basically have 
360 degree turns. Just keep in mind the stall you're used to doing. Good. Now see if you can do this stall with your back facing the camera. Yes, nice. Excellent, excellent. That's what I like to see, good. This will, this will open up more footwork motions. You know, this will give you a little bit more movement. Right. I think the, uh, the, the stall I'm having more trouble with is the, uh, and I, when I, it, it doesn't seem like I have trouble with it with you, but when I'm by myself, is the one that we would be doing like this. Um, which stall, which stall is this? What it? The, the opposite from, from this, this down up one, the one up, one down, one left. Oh, right. yeah, you're talking about like stalls that drop up and down like that, you mean? No, oh, like. We were doing the same drill, but we were doing the stall like I'll show you. Three B. Yeah, show me. Up down stall. Three B. Mmm. Stall. Okay. It's the op I think it's the opposite of this. One. Yeah, we have this we have these outside swinging stalls that happen at like out there. Is that what you're talking about? This one? Yeah, but this one is up stall down. down. Yeah, you're kind of doing it. I was doing it one time when we were uh, practicing and I could do it better than I've been able to do it lately for some reason. Wow. Yeah. So we could go over that stall too. I think stalls are fantastic, especially, again, when you have heavy nunchucks, like the bounces are good, but you, you can get yourself bruised or even like hurt your elbows pretty good with them. So stalls are fantastic. I can, I can work on some stalls with that with you. Oh, I just want to give a shout out again to Christina. Thank you. Thanks for the, <laughs> telling us. Good job. Okay. Christina says good job, by the way, Brian. Okay, thank you, Chuck. Christina, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then Alex is uh, Hope Saul as well. It's great to see you on here too, man. Uh, if you're just joining us, we are basically, I'm just giving Brian a training session. We do uh, every Sunday, we do pro tricks, um, Zoom classes. We get together and we just train. Um, right now, it's a little bit quiet, so I just figured... Why not throw it on YouTube? See if there's other people that can get some benefit from some of this training. Uh, Brian loves to do doubles. So we're working with doubles. He likes really heavy chucks too. So kudos for him for, for working the hard chucks. I'm using the Dark Monks. This is a new experimental prototype speed chuck for doubles, which uh, cool. I pretty much, have you seen these? Yeah, you, show, you already showed them to me. Those are cool. cool. Those are the new light ones, the new light ones. Uh-huh, yeah. They're light, but they still have pretty, they've got a good weight behind them. Cause I feel like I'm pretty sure there's metal underneath here, but then they're padded, just slightly padded, um, but not too much padding where it weighs it down as much. Doesn't have that, does not have the same feel at all. Like uh, the rolls and the momentum still feels more solid with single chucks with the other ones. But for doubles, I really like these. You know, they look a lot different. They, they the, the, the chucks look a lot different than the old ones, and they look like they spin a lot different than the old ones. They look like they spin mm -hmm. more like a regular chuck than a studio. Yeah, yeah they, they do have a different feel for sure without that middle piece and that extra fabric. Yeah, um, it, it, but again, they, they look like they look like they spin like these, like wooden chucks. They look like they're, they're foam chucks that spin like wooden chucks. That's what they look like. Well, you know, and the balance is a lot more like that, too, because they're not tapered. They don't have that baseball bat style with the gradual extra weight kind of going up there. So pretty solid. I, I feel like, yeah, they, they might they might be kind of more similar to your chucks for sure. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Brawl with Ryan. What's going on? And it's good to see uh, Alex as well. We got some people watching, by the way. Um, is this for advanced people? No, this is right now. I would say. I would say, Brian, you're at an intermediate level of nunchucking. Uh, he's learned a lot of tricks from me. <laughs> we, we, uh, you, you're doing really good. Like when he first started, he could do a three beat weave and now you can do three beat weaves with turns and you got pretty much all the moves that we've been working on are stuff that I've taught him over the past couple months. So it's just an example of how I've been doing Zoom classes over the pandemic and Brian was one of the Brian, as well as Christina, who's watching, both both are really awesome students. Thank you, sir. And I started off by just watching Ken. That's how I started. Really yeah. getting good was by watching him, not even going to the classes. So I really appreciate Ken. He showed me yeah. a lot, a lot. I mean, I just happy people can use this. You know, like it just yes, makes sir. me happy. So yeah, I appreciate you doing it because I know that's 
that's really nice. Oh, uh, by the way, I'm going to just read a few more comments and then we can okay. jump back on here. Um, Dennis, be loving those dark monk chucks. Yeah, the studio chucks, I love them too. These are slightly different, like I said. This is a prototype. I asked Dark Monk to make me some lighter pairs for doubles just to see how it would feel. I'm really digging them. Alex says, I bought one of the older Dark Monks. Heavy but work great. We'll buy another one. I get more money. So that's awesome. Yeah, this is a, uh, these are not as heavy. Um, the thing about the Dark Monks too is they simulate, they simulate my favorite kinds of chucks, which are fire chucks. So they have more of the similar weight for the originals. I want to say hi to Joel. And then Alex says, I'm learning some basics like L strikes and have to loads to go over. Keep going. I hope to learn something. Mm -hmm. Good old L strikes. Yeah. And there's, um, with doubles, there's, it's just a whole different ballpark of stuff to learn, isn't there? So yes. Yes, sir. for me, because uh, Brian uses a lot of uh, heavier chucks and he likes the heavy chucks that can do damage, we really focus a lot on stalls because uh, in my opinion, when you're using big heavy chucks, bounces can just do a bit of damage if you, if you mess it up. So I always try to like encourage that you're doing your weaves and instead of doing double bounces to get through it, instead we do stalls, which are where you just kind of hold the chuck and let it drift into a spot and then we change direction that way. So what we were working on, Brian, was probably this, which is yeah, yeah, that was double it. stalls. That's it. We're doing box that's, stalls that's on the all. inside. Mm -hmm. And if I weren't to have the chucks in my hand, uh, what you would see is like these two opposing circles that are moving inner diameter and then the circles move outer diameter. So inner to outer like this. So there's there's two different directions you can go when your arms move a direction. You either go the opposite direction, which will make two inner stalls like this, right? Basically when we, well, actually there's only one direction you can go. You can't go any more than this, but basically we can either stop it halfway or we can stop it in a full 360 degrees. And that's where our stalls come from. If we stop it halfway, we have this outer stall that happens. If we keep going, it'll eventually close our arms back up and then we go back to this inner stall. So there's like this inner stall that happens here and this outer stall that happens to the outside. And it can get really confusing. And I think the outer stall is a little bit harder because with the inside, because you have to get your hands over the point where it's dropping, it's a little bit easier to keep it to the inside because it's the same as like stalling from here is a little bit easier than stalling from out here because you have to kind of still push your hand to the outside of that stall. So that's why I would say that like these outside stalls like this, those kinds of stalls are a little bit harder to pull off than the ones that happen towards your body, like close in. So right. that's, that's totally understandable. But I would highly suggest if you did want to practice it, that you just practice with one. And just have your other hand open and just see if you can go like this. So what I do with this is I kind of flick it up, but then my hand drops and it's upside down like that. So whoosh, whoosh. There's only two directions. Yeah, uh, yeah, that feels a little better. Yeah. Than, mm -hmm. okay. That does yeah. feel, feel a lot different. Yeah, it's it's very different because here, when we go back to the up stall, the wrist never twists upside down, right? The wrist always kind of stays in its spot, and then eventually the thumb goes up. So the wrist is kind of looking like this. When we do the other one, the wrist is twisting all the way upside down to get to the outside. Here, whoosh. Oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, good, good, good. So the, the trick for you to practice, Brian, is gonna be to go, we'll, we'll call this an inside stall, outside stall, inside stall, reverse. So inside stall, outside stall. See, we're just making a half moon, inside stall. Then we go the full circle, reverse. So one, two, three, four. Eventually what it'll be is one, two, three, four with both hands, but we're just kind of practicing with one right now. So inside stall, you could use the other hand. That up stall is always a pain in the butt too, right? The yeah. thing is, is the hand, the left hand, if you go this way, your left hand is up stalling twice. Well, this is down stalling twice. So down stall, down stall. Your left hand's going up stall, up stall. Uh -huh. So your other hand has to practice this too. And you can just try it with one open hand too. Like when you do your chucks, you can do the movement with just one hand here 
here, just so you can get the rhythm or the movement of one. And then when you're done, grab the other side and see if you can do the other way, which is up stall, up stall, up stall, up stall. I still gotta work on my left hand up stalls for that matter. A trick to a, an easier up stall is to add a little bit of a flick when you're right around six o'clock. Think of a golf swing. If you just go flick and then you lift your thumb up with it. So flick, flick. you really can't see it so much, but if I was to go in slow motion, my hand would be like flick right there. And then it'd be that flick, that flicking motion. And then I push it forward into the, there you go. Yeah, that looks good. Good man, very good. So yeah, I would, I would practice one hand is down stalling, down stall, down stall, down stall, up stall. Or we'll say in, out, in, reverse. And it's gonna be the same thing backwards too. So when it changes directions, it'll be in, out, in, reverse. Then we're back to in, out, in, reverse, in, out, in, reverse. I know that sounds kind of complicated, but remember this is in, in is where we're doing stalls here, and out is when we're stalling out here. Out is here, out is here, out is here, out is here. And when we combine them together, and this is this is more like I'm not gonna, this isn't for you to do yet, but this is just for homework. It'll be in, out, in, reverse, out, in, reverse. And then you have this nice little combo. And of course, you can go into weaves and then get your combo in, and then go back into your weaves. So it's, it's a really nice, the stalls will allow you to reverse directions back into weaves if you go sideways. But to start with, again, we'll just go, let's see, let's see where you're at actually. And then I'll read a couple more comments. I see some comments that come up on the YouTube. Real quick tip, you're just joining, I'm uh, giving Brian a lesson and uh, he agreed to let me do it on YouTube. So you might have a couple more people, friends join in too. Nice, good, good. In, out. Your installs look a lot better than your out stalls right now. The ups, the ups still getting you a little bit, but it's it's looking a lot better. Yeah, it's looking a lot better. It's really hard it's getting that thing to go up there. It's feeling a lot better. It's feeling like I can I can work it into looking right, but it's just not it's not coming one, with the combo. One more thing to think about, Ryan, is uh, you're a little sideways when you're coming, like you're going in, out, in reverse. Um, think up and down because when you go up and down, it'll help the stall like be able to have enough room to drop because you want to be able to drop into a stall. It'll help it straighten it out and it'll make it a little bit easier. Okay. If that makes sense. If you think of a dolphin, uh, you know how dolphins look straight when they're falling. It's because it's because you're able to think like you align the back end with it. So it has like this sliding feel, but if you don't have enough sideways motion, it's a lot harder to get underneath it and you'll end up like kind of sideways or flat, a flat stall or it'll have too much force going this way. But if you go up and over, it allows it to drop a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So think here to here. So we're really thinking almost elliptical. Good. <laughs> you have a favorite hand. Um, you have a favorite hand with the double out stalls. I can see it. Like one of them is one of them's getting one of them's definitely getting there. That's good. That's a hard move too. Like yes, sir. Stopping, it is. stopping it the is. nutshell is not easy. It's one of our harder moves. I think it's one. It, it is a stall, mm -hmm. but I think th this stall is one turning into one of the, the harder moves that, that yes here we do. All right, Brian. So I'm going to give you a. I'll give you a combo to, to put it in besides this one. Then see the right. reason why I think you, your install combos are better is just because you're already working it from a three beat weave, and then you're going into the stall into a reverse three beat weave, and then you're going to the stall. Well, we can do the same thing with with these outside stalls too. You can do a three beat weave, right? And then your right hand drops down, and then we just go into a, a this bigger stall instead, back into the three beat weave. So you know how we were doing a three beat weave and your right hand would pull itself all the way around to drop and then we would go back, right? That's how we've been doing it. This time, just stop it halfway. So it's here. As soon as I make the crossover and I'm coming over to this other side, basically this is gonna flip up and over this way. This one's gonna flip under and then we reverse it. So it's the same move. We're just stopping it halfway through. I got it. 
How about, let's see, let's see it again. Yeah. So it'll be like this. We're doing the three beat weave. Remember, we're going to an outside stall. So as we're coming over here, both hands are uncrossing, but it's only going halfway. So it's really hard to do in slow motion, but it'll look like that. So three beat weave, cross, and back. Weave. Stop it early. Get in there, get in there. Uh, the right hand, just make sure it, it upstalls a little bit too. Wait, ah. let's see. Yeah, make sure that. Good, good, okay. It's slowly building in there. Okay. Um, good, so the left hand is good. The right hand, the right hand's good too. Your planes are just, uh, your left hand plane is going straight up while this is going out like this. So you're actually creating two stall points in, in different angles. Um, it's good. It's just, just try to see if you can, when you're doing this motion, make sure that remember the hand just kind of flips upside down. The left hand will flip upside down while the right hand flips up. So it's like this, and then in slow motion, watch the left hand wrist turns upside down while this one turns right side up. Again, okay. I'm giving you a really hard stall. Okay, okay. This is not a basic stall. This is probably just because you were able to get the other stalls. Good. Good. Uh, try to keep your back a little bit straighter, too. Okay. There you go. You want to kind of keep your body in center so you won't, you won't pull anything. Plus, it has that performance aspect. And also, when you do it, make sure that you turn your body towards the camera. So it's like we're 90 degrees here. And then when I do the stall, I take a 90 degree turn this way. And then when I go back to my weave, I go back. So it's here. Okay. 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 Whoosh, whoosh. So make sure you look at me or look at the camera when you do that stall. Good. Good. I like the turning. Good. Sorry, man. I did give you a really hard move too, but. No problem. Um, You're okay. I like that. It'll be good homework. Yeah, that's that a good is homework. Good homework. Move. That is a good homework. That is that's a whole new combo for it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Basically, anytime you do an inward stall, you can do an outward one. So just to rehash one more time, and then I'll read some of the comments. We have two combos you can do to get that outward stall. Well, the most important is to do it one hand first, where we're going in to out to in to up. So we reverse so have in out in reverse. Let's see if I can remember. I think this is it. Yes. Uh, the left hand, just make sure you dip it down a little bit more. But yeah, it's close. Right now, the hand's just kind of pulling out this way. Uh, your your right hand's going right, but the left hand is was kind of pulling backwards. Just make sure both hands stay in front of you. Okay. And it's really like up and down motion. Okay. Okay. It's a toughie. Good, yeah, good. Is, just make sure. This is one of the tougher ones. I Just see. watch your hands because if your hand, did you notice your left hand went behind your back? Mm -hmm. Do it again. I'll show you. Okay. Do it again. I'll show you. Do your stalls and make sure nothing goes behind your back. See that? Your hands behind yeah. your back. Yes. Yeah, That's all. Just, just catch it because uh, chances are you want to you wanna go on this plane here. The, you want to go on the wheel plane. So basically one's going on the wall, one's going on the wheel. So it kind of has like this stalling motion over here. It's gonna take some time to get it. Everything's gonna be straight flat. So my hands, if it's kind of like that Bruce Lee movie where he's going like, whoo, it's very right. flat. It's gonna be on this plane the whole time. Both hands are in front. And even if you do it this way, if you have no chucks in front of you and you join your hands together, this is, this is a good exercise you can do too. No chucks, hands are creating circles crossing, right? Both stall points are done in this area. Just make sure that both hands like, so both your elbows are touching in the middle like this. And then this is, goes down, this goes up. So they're moving in opposite directions. They're both to the outside now. Yep, keep it going. Now they're one's up and one's down and it goes back. Good, yes. And keep making these circles here for a second. These are the circles that you'll wanna get really comfortable with because the stall that we're doing literally is this. The stall looks like this. This one's going down, this one's going up and we stop when they're both to the outside. And so the hand doesn't move to the back. We just have this nice circle that's being made here, nice and slow. And then remember the stall will happen to the outside. And then the inward stall actually just happens when our hands cross here, except for 
At this point, one of the hands is upside down while the other is right side up because you have an upstall as well as a downstall happening simultaneously. Hey, Indigo Hello. just joined us. Hello. Hey, Indigo. I, I don't know if you noticed, but we're streaming live on YouTube as well. So just FYI. Okay, no, I didn't notice that. I had troubles uh, finding the link. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I've. You know, I've made it the same length for so long, I didn't even post that. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. I know it's somewhere in the history, but also my time time settings are strange and I don't understand what time it is where you are. And I, oh, <laughs> sure. But I'm yeah. Here, I made it. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see you, man. Well, I actually don't see you. I see this big yes, circular. <laughs> okay. okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I'm going to read off. Whatever you got. Yeah, what's up, man? Now give me just a second here, too. I am going for. I got to do something really quick. Okay, so my hand should never go behind my back. Is that a key point? Yes, yes. Okay, got it. Thank they'll, you. They'll never go behind your back. Okay, thank you, sir. And got it. Got it. I, get, I got it. Give me just a second Look here. Look, go. Hello. Hi. I want to see if, how do I hide the blue one? I just want to make sure that way we have more screen room. Where does that go? Hold on. Uh, da, da, da. Make host a lot to record. Maybe, maybe this. There we go. There. All right. Perfect. Um, I'm going to read off a couple comments too here. We got uh, Joel Johnny says hi from India. What's up? Hello, Alex. Hello, India. Yeah, it's, I love that. There's people from all around the world. Yes, sir. That is cool. That is and then I had the same said, problem. I had the same problem. Indigo has like with the time getting like I thought the day was three for me. I get I I start I start thinking our time is three. I get mixed up just like what he's doing. I'll I'll make it more clear in the future. My it's my fault. So I'm oh, you doing job. You caught me today because I was waiting on three, and then you came and said fifteen minutes. Just thank it's, you so much. Yeah, because I was waiting. It's, yeah, I've been doing gigs so many. Like I've been doing stuff in the past, so we've had to rearrange times. I'll I'll make sure to be a clearer next time, just so it it works better. Also wanted to say, um, we've got someone from Middle England, boredom as Stu Boredom, from oh, England. England. Mm-hmm. And then Alex, anytime you watch Ken, you learn something. <laughs> thank you. Ball with Brian says I can do figure eight wrist rolls and redirects. What level am I at? I mean, figure eight wrist rolls and redirects. I would say that's that's a solid beginner level if that's that's the extension of it. Um, if you're ever like performing with it, you'll you'll know that it's not even about what level you're at, but how you present it. So even no matter what level you're at, it's always good to keep practicing those moves in different ways and find creative ways to do it because you'll find techniques aren't aren't the end all, especially when you're trying to turn this into an art form. But what you do with those. Oh, I want to say hi to Gorilla. We have Peter or Perry Vollering. He just joined. That's a nice little combo. That's awesome. Patel says hi. And Alex says the upstall is harder. And it absolutely is. An upstall is very hard, especially with Chucks. It's easier to do with Poi than with Chucks because um, you have this whole other stick that kind of gets in the way. But one thing to remember is always the most force or the most power from an upstall comes from the downward. And that there's like this pulling motion that happens upwards. And I'm always, like, if I were to stick my thumb up, it's almost like like I'm giving a thumbs up when I'm done. My thumb will be pointing upwards. So if I'm down from a down stall here, in order to get a nice snappy up stall, I really create a lot of force. The whole time I'm doing this up stall, the chuck feels like a stick almost. It's very solid. There's no wobbling. There's no, there's no lack of energy. Like, there's always force propelling it through up until the very end. And then I always have to make sure that my hand matches underneath the very top of it, because if my hand doesn't match, it'll look more diagonal like that, right? But if I can match my hand to the very top, so say I, I stall it diagonally like this, but then I push my hand forward, it straightens the chuck out. So you have to get underneath the chuck in order to get that to stall right. And then the very last thing is most of your force is in the first 20% of the swing, and then you just follow that force through and push into it. 
So there's a lot of little things that happen with it, but it's really all about just, do you see how I just kind of, how it slows down at the very last moment? It's just like, it just kind of hangs there for a second. That's because I'm putting less and less force until I reach the pinnacle where it just almost stops. This is almost like there's no force left, but um, it's just hanging on to whatever little force was left. And then it's going to start to redirect. And the moment I feel the, the momentum start to drop, then it's time to pull it back down. Or with that said, you can also just stall and then just grab the top. So you can go here. If you want, you can just stall and grab it up here. And then you have oh, another kind of stall. Yeah, That's nice. Mm -hmm. Do a stall and then catch it up there and then do a flick. It's a nice combo. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's... There's all kinds of things you can do. Another thing you can do is when you're ready to grab it, this one, you can just hold it here. Then you just swing your arm down and grab it back down to here. Whoosh. Kind of yeah. a fast motion, but you have it here. You just. <laughs> yeah. And a long time ago, I could do this. And I probably can't. You can do a box stall like this. This is more, I would consider this to be advanced. I think we covered this already. Don't hate me if I can't do this. Actually, it's going to be more of a box stall like this. And then you switch hands to grab the opposite sides. Of course, I, did, I can't do it. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Ah, it, it's been a while, but you can you can box stall and then then switch the yes. And, it's, ah! and then you're basically grabbing the opposite stick that's stalling. Uh, it's been a while since I've done it, but yeah. yeah so you do nice. these double stall, ah. and you grab the opposite side. For some reason, but I think we also practice it together, is uh, when you do like two downward stalls like this. Oh, uh, yeah. You also uh, pick uh, the different chuck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there, we also did, uh, yeah, we also did two up stalls too. We did two up stalls and then we grabbed the tops from there too. Oh, yeah, and then did. from there, oh yeah, yeah, from here, you remember this one? So, okay, this is an old one that we did a while ago. Two up stalls, grab the tops like this, and then you kind of lift them up and then you go back. So that way we, we are grabbing the different sides. I'll show you what happened there. From here, this right hand is going to grab this bottom one. So it's going to, when I let go, this hand's going to grab this one. And then this one's going to grab this one. So they're grabbing opposite sides. So it's like, we get these two up stalls here. Whoosh, grab it in reverse grip. We lift it just a hair, just because it's got to drop for a second. Actually, my left hand is grabbing where my right hand's at because it'll go like this, like that. And that will get put me in a weave position so I can go straight into that 3D weave. So it's here, yeah. whoosh, right hand or left hand replaces right, right hand grabs the bottom and swings out. Uh, yeah. That's a very fun one. That was the one that we were working on. It wasn't an upstall, downstall. There were two upstalls. We grabbed them, stopped them, lifted them, and continued yeah. forward. So. We can do it from the box, we can do it from the downward stall, and we can do it from upward stall. Yes. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so Plus, if, you, if you do an up down stall too, you could probably just reverse one hand like that. Then you'd have this weird cross grip. I don't know what you do from there, but maybe, huh, I don't know. Just crazy stuff. I like the box uh, stall. Uh, switch grip. I mean, box stall uh, switch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me too. Me too. Yeah, got to uh, got to work that a little bit more myself. Like I'm having problems with the down stall because it's already down stalling. You you got to give it an upward. You got to give it an upward lift right before you do it. That way you have enough time. Because if you do a down stall and you don't give it a lift and you trade, it just drops straight down. But if you give it a down stall, you give it a little lift. Yeah. Except I actually hit in the way. You do down stall, you give it a little lift, you'll have enough time to grab it as it drops. But if not, it'll just be this downward grip. So just a little bit of an upward lift right before you let go. And it'll buy you a little bit more time. Yeah, that one. I think I think that's that's the problem that I have is I have to think about upward lift before I grab it. Yeah. There's a couple questions. Uh, Braun with Ryan says, hey, how should I present it? Can you be a little bit more clear, please? Um, when I'm talking about presentation of your nunchucks, that just means how you perform it, how fast you go. Like you can do a three beat weave, that's just a technique, but you can also do it from afar. You can do it from a close. You can do three beat weaves from your hips. Uh, you can do it slowly. You 
can extend it wide. There's a lot of different ways you can present the same techniques. And some of them are actually called different techniques when you do it that way, but really it's just the same technique in a different form. So when you can just do a few basic stuff, for instance, if you, you can only do rips, then when you're presenting it to an audience, if you just do rips the whole time with figure eight wrist rolls, they're just gonna see two techniques, right? But then you start thinking, well, how can I present this in a way that makes it more than just techniques, you know? And that's gonna be how your, how your face looks, how intense you are, whether you stop or not, whether you do figure eight wrist rolls up high, whether it's low. So like start adding a little bit variety with the same moves and you'll find that people can watch the same techniques a lot longer. So don't think so much about techniques, think about playing with what you got as well. It's huge, it's a very big thing, especially in the performance world or if you wanna like showcase it to people. Wouldn't you all agree? <laughs> yes, that's very <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, um, with the wrist rolls, you can already play around so much. Mm -hmm. True. Especially wrist rolls, because what you got, you got the regular wrist roll, and then if you can do the reverse, then we have everything, right? We have turning wrist rolls that can go from forward to reverse. Yeah. You have extension wrist rolls. You and know. if you want to make extra circles, you can always find somewhere a spot where you can do an extra circle. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Like, yeah, you got the figure eight wrist roll without the extra beat, and then you have that extra beat that you can add by your hip right here. Like so many different options. You can do figure eight wrist rolls by your head. And while that doesn't look so cool, if you can do figure eight wrist rolls any direction, then all of a sudden you can start doing figure eight wrist rolls in like this 360 pattern where your hand is extended and then you drop it on the ground, of course. <laughs> it's like, I normally do a front to front there and it's like, my brain's like, no, make it a wrist roll. Nope, I need to do a front to front there. <laughs> yeah, I usually have a front to front right there. But you can, um, you can like extend your arms and then all of a sudden the figure eight wrist roll looks totally different, right? Yeah. I think that's the, that's the important thing. Not that you copy what you just saw, but you just play with what you know and you make it into something new. Yeah. Keep inventing new combinations and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I really feel like just about everything's been done to some degree. Um, so it's really about, I mean, it's just like having words. Everyone uses the same words, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we all have the same stories. Right, or feelings. Let me, uh, I'm gonna read a couple more and then, let's see. Nanchaku is once help with the wheel. And then Ball says, I uh, always think what tricks I'm gonna learn next instead of learning variations of the tricks I already know. That's okay, that's a common That's a common mistake. I won't even call it a mistake. Like you're hungry for tricks, that's awesome. But really like, there's that Bruce Lee saying, you know, if you're the man that does one kick 10,000 times, then 10,000 different kicks once. Um, when you do your figure eight wrist roll over a thousand times, I think like there's a different kinds of presence. There's a different kind of control than when you're when you've only done it like a hundred times. And that level of control, I think, is what really makes something fantastic. I've seen, I mean, I think you guys can, I don't know, like it, it goes both ways. Like you can be really technical with your nunchucks and that works really good for other nunchuckers. But for most people, like if you're doing a demonstration for people that don't know what you're doing, it's better. It's there's a totally different way to perform than when you're trying to do like a lot of complex tricks. So again, like if you're trying to impress most nunchuckers, you're gonna to wanna to have a lot of tricks because that's all they're gonna be seeing. But to most people, they don't know what tricks you're doing. They have no clue. So it's your presentation of those tricks and the way that you make it do something that's gonna be all the difference. So in my opinion, I mean, just for me, like as a performing artist, I think that that's, that's the way that you can use it to help get yourself, I don't wanna say help get yourself a part-time job, but that's, that's how you sell it is you have to think in terms of the people that you're performing for. And most of the time, they don't know what you're doing. They just want to see it in a cool presented way, get in a cool costume, have a cool way to show it off. Even if it's the same trick, just make sure it looks, it has variety within it and how you move and express yourself. Yeah, I totally agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's like that and yeah, just keep it simple and 
if you're performing, just do the things that you're so comfortable with. You've already done them thousands of times. Do those things mm -hmm. and don't do the the new things that you're still practicing on. Even mm -hmm. if you want to show it, but maybe you fail. It's true. I've seen, uh, I run an entertainment company and I've seen people, they've sent videos or they'll show me like what they can do. And they want to try and impress me like by showing the hardest tricks and they drop over and over again. And for me, it's like a person that can just look, have good presence without dropping to me is gold. Like it's to me, that looks a lot better than if you're doing these super complicated moves, but you drop a lot. The only difference is a juggler, like a juggler. I feel like jugglers can drop a few more times since they're, because they have so many things they're juggling simultaneously. I give them a little bit of leeway, but with nunchucks, it looks better to not drop and to stay in character than it is to break character, to always be picking up your chucks, things like that. Like just, it's better just to stick with what you can do well. Oh, yeah. But I also- I have to agree with that. That's true. Presentation also... is everything. Reality, perception is reality. Yeah, exactly. I look at something, it, is more important than what it really is. Yeah, and again, it depends on your audience too, of course. If you're with a bunch of chuckers or if I'm training with you, I mean, I'll be happy to see you try out those hard tricks, you know? Definitely definitely more forgiving than an audience in that way. Yeah. Because I know what you're trying to do and I know how hard it is. Like, you know, the, the triple finger roll, for instance, where you're going finger, you know, middle finger, pointer thumb, to me, it's a lot easier than doing this move or it's harder, it's a lot harder to do that move than it is to do that horizontal aerial. But in terms of crowd pleasing, most crowds love that big throw and the catch, you know? But to me, yeah. that's like, it's, it just looks more complicated than it is compared to like that finger wheel. But then again, if you're super far away, they can't, they just see the nunchuck spinning. They don't even know that you're spinning it on your fingers. They just see this nunchuck moving like this, right? So they don't even know, like, they don't even realize the intricacies of it because you're so far away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Alan, uh, thanks Indigo and Brian for allowing me to record this or stream this on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Speaking of which, uh, what have you been working on Indigo? I haven't, I haven't talked to you in a minute. Uh, yeah, I've been pretty busy with life, <laughs> um, but I've been working on a combination for the single and maybe double nunchaku for the tournament. Huh. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what tournament it is, but it's with Jelle van den Broek. He told me uh, there is a tournament with digit rolls and finger things, wheel, butterfly. They want to see stuff like that. Uh, so I've been working nice. on a combo for that. Yeah, it's JJ's, JJ's thing, right? Yeah, but I don't know if it's his tournament, like the Golden Combo tournament. I think it's something else from Russ, Russ Barnes, maybe. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. So many names. Pioneers. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. Pioneers. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so I've a little bit been working on that, but uh, mostly been making music the last few weeks. Sure. Um, but yeah, now that I have the note track back. So yeah, what I've been practicing on was uh, under the leg, into the finger wheel, uh, into the one finger finger wheel, into an aerial, into the butterfly. Oh, Indigo, would you be able to turn your uh, camera up just a hair? We, oh. Your head, your head's been cut off for a while. <laughs> okay, you've been headless. <laughs> Yeah, I need to find a better spot and position to put everything because it's not ideal. Oh, I hear you. No, I hear you. Uh, that's awesome, though. I'm going to read a couple more comments off here. Um, thanks, Gopal. Raul with Ryan says, thanks. Um, how do you implement movement? That's, that's a big one. Like, movement is something you have to train while you're training the technique. So... Um, I think a lot of times people think that they can just add movement in their technique and then they don't realize that it has to be added in 
with the technique. So it's not something you can do freely because if the chuck is spinning one direction, you have to figure out how to move your body so the chuck continues to spin that direction. So um, one of my nunchuck basics shows the most basic uh, two turns. One is the in-spin turn where you're, it's going upwards and you get it by the shoulder, you drop it behind the head and you turn around like this. And this is on the nunchuck basics video. And then the other one is a pinwheel pass to the other side as well. That'll get you spinning in both directions. So no matter which way the nunchuck's spinning, if it's going counterclockwise in your right hand, you do a pinwheel pass. And if it's going counterclockwise, I'm sorry, this is clockwise. If it's going clockwise, then you do the over the head one. And that will allow the chuck on any direction to, to go with it. Check it out. It's a nunchuck, it's under the nunchuck beginners class. That's the best way that I find to start with movement. But it goes on and on and on from there. Make sure you can do the reverse of whatever you're doing, and that's gonna that's gonna be huge. Whenever you can do the reverse of any technique, that, that's a huge one, I think. Thank you. I think it's Pri, Priyanshu. Thank you. And that's awesome. From India. Uh, Brawl, sorry if I ask too many comments. Not every day I get to ask questions to Nunchucker. No, that's okay. I think you guys are cool with me answering some of these questions or? Yeah, sure. Brian yeah, sure. And I'm fine with it. Nice. Nice. And then Mazdek says, uh, cool, I'm from Morocco. So we got India and Morocco. And then Prinyashu asks if uh, he's even reading comments. Yep, most definitely. What's up, Morocco? Mazdek says, to show me a trick, I have four nunchaku. And please excuse me if I butcher any names. Um, a <laughs> couple more. Yander Tail's on. He's a, he's a regular. That's awesome. Welcome, man. It's good to see you. Um, and then Andre wants to see the best trick. The best, best trick. trick. So, what you got, Indigo? This is a common question. What's the what's the best trick, or what's the hardest trick, or? Hmm. Hmm. We'll go. We'll go with uh, Indigo and Brian first. Well, the best trick that I can do without fault will probably be the butterfly. Hmm. Yeah. How you can just catch around. it and throw it. Y'all, that's really hard to do, by the way. Um, but the best, uh, what's the best? The best for oh. entertaining the people? The best for defeating your enemy? <laughs> I don't know. Best, best is a tough question. Maybe, maybe um, what's one of your most complicated tricks? The amputation is one of mine. Let's see it. Oh yeah, amputations. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was taught off of um, um God, Demo. I'm sorry, Demo, Thank you. Yeah, been practicing on that also. I want to try to do the amputation with the butterfly. Oh my gosh! <laughs> but it should be very possible. Let's see. Ha. <laughs> I like that catch nice. the butterfly. Wow. Yeah, I will practice it. That's nice. That's awesome. I mean, I think there's no best for me either. It depends on what I'm feeling like. I mean, I change props a lot. So nunchucks is definitely not the only prop I, I spin. I've been doing a lot of sword lately. But I think the hardest move that I can do is the figure eight wrist roll snakes, where we're doing snakes, but then we're adding figure eight wrist rolls into it. It's just a hard timing move. Yeah, that's also a very difficult one. Oh, or this one. But I don't know how it's called, but it's a, a combo. I'll try and do it. It's that you do a horizontal and a shoulder pass in the same time. Oh, you were the one showing me that one. And I, oh, shoot. I, I was working on it for like a little while. Now I can't remember. Oh, man, it's been a minute. <laughs> so a lot of the double chuckers can do this pretty, pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah, it's very nice, very fun. Nah. It reminds me of drumming for some reason. It's like I'm going nuts on the drums. Yeah. Dang, I have lost my touch with that one. <laughs> yeah, it's L strikes, but then, uh, what is it? Once this one goes down, it becomes a horizontal, a horizontal yeah. throw that catches. Yeah. Exactly like that, and then the same on the other side. Oh man, I actually practiced this for a little bit after you showed me this indigo and I 
had it down decently, but it's been a while. Uh, I yeah. can't remember. I like that one too. I think it's it's a nice difficulty of yeah things you have to focus on. Yeah, yeah. I think there was a, a trick that I did, and I just can't remember. I think that was it. And then, uh, well, <laughs> it's been a minute since I've done that one. That's for sure. I just don't practice it. It's cool because it goes through two different planes. You've got, right? Because one's going this direction, which is the floor plane, while the other one is kind of, I don't know, your hands are moving in different positions like that. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot easier for me to do throws like that go in the same direction. But when we start going in opposing directions, it gets a little tricky. Uh, exactly. Yes, sir. Also, I was thinking about the amputations. And I mm -hmm. can do an aerial under my arm. And I can do an amputation. And it's kind of the same thing. If you know what I mean. I can throw it under the arm. I can do the amputation. But it's almost the same yeah yeah i can totally see that mm -hmm. so, i like that though the end of the arm throw yeah. i'm uh, still getting used to these chucks so yeah. there's one thing i've noticed which is um the balance points a little bit lower so i have to grip lower when i do my throws or i'll not be able to control this that's the one thing i've got to remember it just kind of flies out of the hands where it would normally come straight upwards um yeah. That's just me getting used to these chucks still. Yeah, but I like that they have the uh, the part in the end that you can grip it more like you have with the juggling clubs. These are super grippy too. I can't tell you guys, like, I feel like I could almost hold up my hand and it'll like stick to the top of my hand. They're super grippy, which is awesome, but still something to get used to. Because sometimes I'll do a throw and it'll like catch on the side of my finger or the side of my hand and it'll just kind of just ever so slightly like drop the chuck. Mm. None of these things are complaints. These are just things that I have to get used to, but it is things yeah. I've noticed. Yeah, but every nunchuck feels so different than, yeah. But playing double chucks, I think it's best when you have two the same, but I yes. mostly have two different chucks. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that, man. Yeah, Except my the same But it's also a good practice. Like sometimes I'll practice like this is a fire sword. I might do a fire sword in a nunchuck simultaneously just to see what I can do with it. You know? <laughs> you can do the amputations. Whoosh. Can you imagine going to war and battle and someone is there with a nunchuck and a sword? <laughs> <laughs> And a nunchuck, <laughs> he'll wrap up your weapon and stab you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been really, I've been really enjoying the fire sword lately. This is just, a, this is my favorite fire sword right now. Love this thing. It's great. It's a lot of nunchuck moves you can do with the fire sword as well. It's just a very stiff object. I don't have a sword like that, but I have swords like this. But I won't throw them here. Oh, those look heavy. Wow. Those look big, too. Those are sweet. Wow. Wow. I'm going to read some comments off really quick because I see some compliments to throw. Brian. Give me just a second here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Ah, Mazdek says you're awesome. So are you, man. Thank you for joining the our live stream, too. Really appreciate that. Andre wants to know our favorite move. I mean, I don't really have a favorite move. That's the hardest part. It depends on the day. Right now, my favorite move currently is just, usually my favorite move is the newest move I'm doing because it doesn't feel old and stale. I've done a, you know, there's a time when all the moves were my favorite moves at one point, just about. But my favorite one right now is just working on uh, opposite time, same direction hand rolls. I just like them because you can really whoosh. You can really just like move with them. And they're figure eight wrist rolls that are going in the same direction. Very similar to the standard split up hand rolls, except for they're going in the same direction, which allows me to turn with them. So right now that's kind of like my favorite one. Yeah, the split up is my favorite. 
Yeah, yeah, it's like that one, except for they're both going in the same direction instead of opposites. And because of that, it's a lot easier to do turns with it. Also, the practicing on some of Jason's stuff. With the shoulder coaster contact. Oh my stuff. gosh, show me. Contact oh. move, Jason, Jason's so good. It's, it's not good at all, <laughs> but I will show you. <laughs> I've normally been practicing, uh, but it doesn't come so, over. That's good. You, I, I saw it, though. Yeah. Shoulder coaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he's doing some crazy things. I need to get Jason back down here, for that matter. i got to get Jason back into the flow tricks thing. He was, he's, he's so good. He's on another level. Super cool guy, too. Um, Mazda, oh yeah, I forgot to show what the wheel was, so I can give a demonstration of that really quick. Alex says, cool, Brian. And then uh, Alex also says, you make the butterfly look so easy, Indigo. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, there is cross. I've been talking with many people and we've been talking about the butterfly a lot. Uh, so maybe in the future, I'm going to upload some compilation video of different people talking about the butterfly so you can see the different angles, the different explanations, and mm -hmm. now <laughs> you give sure me an that. estimate, Indigo, because <laughs> I think this is this is important to know. About how many hours do you think you've trained the butterfly since you started? Take a guess. <laughs> Over two hundred hours for sure. <laughs> two hundred <laughs> hours. So you guys. Keep that in mind, right? So if you if you don't think you're nailing a move, Indigo's been training the same move for 200 hours, and that's why he's killing it. And because he's killing it so hard, he can come up with these other moves that I can't begin to touch because I haven't put in the time. You got to put in the time to make it work, right? But since he's at that level now, he can do all these other different concepts and ideas that is really hard for others to, to reach. And that's really important to know, which is as you get higher, even though the move may seem simple and you feel like you've conquered it, if you keep going with it and you keep training it, well, you'd be like Indigo. <laughs> and then you can start coming up with all these crazy moves that advance that yeah. even further because you have such an understanding and control with it. Yeah, exactly. And it's also just do it because uh, it's fun to do. I remember the butterfly, I discovered it when I was on a festival. Um, and I had the LED shucks, and I don't know how I discovered it, but suddenly I was doing it like this, the butterfly with the LEDs, and I just kept walking around the whole night like this because I was like, wow, <laughs> this is amazing. And, you know, I never That's awesome. stopped. <laughs> that is cool. Um, okay, so I'm going to show the wheel really quick because that was asked. The wheel... Now there's, I probably have a couple videos on the wheel too, if you watch the page, but the wheel is essentially, you're trying to keep your fingers on the rope. You put two front grips, run two front grips like this, fingers, oh, let me move this lighting so you can see it a little bit easier. Two front grips, fingers are right at the rope, right at the rope level right here. One finger goes below the rope, the other one goes above the rope. Now I'm gonna start over here like this. So there's a finger above it, the rope and there's a finger below it. These fingers are gonna drive it. So. Basically, I'm gonna pull this up to my nose and when we're ready to go, my fingers are gonna open up. I generally go like this. I try to keep my fingers as far out of the way as possible until there's two fingers left. And then it's a very, very solid downward push and then we push up. So down to up. It kind of looks like a circle, but it's more like an elongated oval like this. Now, once you get it started, you have to go at the speed that you initiated at. So you can't control the speed directly when you're first learning it, but you gotta follow the speed that you put it at. So again, we're here. Point your finger on the top, point your finger on the bottom, like this. This pushes down, this pushes up, this pushes down. And what's probably gonna happen is it's gonna fall like this. And the reason why it falls is because there's not enough motion. So when you first start, use your palm to push this up and push this down at the same time. And you'll get more of a, you get a little bit more oomph because it, it's kind of like a lawnmower. You gotta get it started first. So pull this up by your nose, push this down, push this up, don't hit your chin, kind of keep your arms extended out and then roll with it until you can find your fingers. This is going to be something you're going to just have to practice a while. It'll just be something you have to practice for a while, but again, finger on top, finger on bottom, get it by the face, 
extend your arms so you don't uppercut yourself. This pushes up, this pushes down, and then you extend your fingers so they don't get in the way. And you'd look, you think about elongated circles, not like full circles like this, and don't go too big, just more like up and down. They're kind of going up and down, but there's still a little bit of a circular pattern. And just practice that over and over and over again. Yeah, exactly. I learned this move when I watched the favorite videos of Ken Hill on YouTube. And there was a guy and he was dressed like a ninja with a devil mask or something. And that's the first time I saw the finger. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I started practicing it since then. But yeah, it's very nice because mm -hmm. yeah, you can go do so many things with the finger. Wheel. You can mm -hmm. go around. You can do it yeah. horizontally. I've seen wheel fountains. I, I'm not very good at it where you kind of change the wheel direction on the other side. Uh -huh. I usually... And then I also saw people do like a reverse wheel, which is I thought was pretty sweet. They'll do a reverse wheel, throw it up, and catch it behind their back. Uh, yeah. You know? Sense. The reverse yeah. wheel just kind of sets you up for that, but it's not something that I practice often, so oh, I'm yeah. just lucky I caught it twice. I think uh, Yellow JJ, he did the trick that he was doing the finger wheel here on this side, and then he throws it, and then he catches it here in mm. the wheel again and goes the other way. Yeah. I haven't even begun that one. I also saw someone take a wheel into one finger wheel and stick it under their leg. So they'll go into the wheel, they'll go into one finger wheel and just roll it under their leg. There's some guy that stuck the wheel like behind his butt backwards like that. Like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. He did a wheel behind his back backwards with his hands between his legs doing the wheel like behind him. Like crazy. one finger wheel, of course. Well, if you know, if you can do that move, I think you can perform and you've got a show. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely have something that not a lot of people have. So that's something interesting though. Like behind the back is not used too often. That's like even a moon wave is a little bit harder or a sun wave is a little bit hard to get behind the back or an X catch. Like just starting behind the back is just, just so much things get in the way, but it is, it is pretty cool to see people that can do behind the back work. Prime example is the three beat weave that like when you can do a weave behind your back, but you keep it by the, your waist, you get that nice little, it just has a different feel than if you went like this by a lot, you know, front yeah. here, front there. Yeah. So yeah, nice. I don't know. Anything behind the back, I feel like it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Like that. I don't have a lot of behind the back stuff, only a few aerials, but it's, I don't know if you can see it. It's the aerial that comes from uh, the left top and it goes to the right bottom. It's an aerial that I do behind mm -hmm. the back. And then some variation of this with wrist rolls. But oh, yeah. the rest Oop, I don't have mm -hmm. back stuff. I'm going to be honest. I don't do a whole lot behind the back either. I just uh, feel like it's unexplored. It's not very explored very often. Yeah. Oh, uh, Mazdek says, uh, yes, it's fall. Thanks, I have to practice it. Okay, from Morocco, my name, Othmane. Well, I hope that helps. I'm glad, I'm glad that, was, glad that was helpful. Yeah, I will explore some behind the back stuff too because I, I have some pain in my upper lower back, but I feel when mm. I do these behind the back shoulder passes that it's, I don't know, Growing it or it's, it's stretching it there, yeah, exactly. So yeah, maybe yeah. I need to spend more time there. <laughs> I can say like people, people, you can use nunchucks for really cool stretches. I think my favorite one is where you just do a behind the back pass like this. Then you just lift your hand up and it stretches this part of your hand. Like it stretches your shoulder really good back here. That's a good stretch. So you just kind of grab it and pull it up like a lever. Not too hard, of course, you don't want to hurt yourself. But for me, I've dislocated both my shoulders in the past. so. Being able to stretch my shoulders is nice and just getting this behind the back pass and then pulling up to kind of get a little bit of a stretch on the shoulder just feels good to me. Yeah, exactly. Because my hands can't touch each other, but I think by practicing that in the future, they will. Mm -hmm. I used to be able to touch my hands together behind my back until I dislocated my shoulders. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Martial arts, long story. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Good damage from the old martial arts days. But with sparring. 
<laughs> There's just so many moves with Chucks, y'all. I think that's it's really important to know. Like, even like when you think, I, don't know, I said it's all been done, but don't let that like discourage you. I think it's actually kind of cool to just keep going because I don't know. Like I said, like the butterfly is a great example. You know, you learn the butterfly and we've seen it before in other, in other props, but then, I don't know, you just keep going and you come up with all these crazy new ideas. Like Indigo's like going with these wild butterfly moves. I don't know, this is cool. And that's, that's where we go, you know? And even for someone like me, I try to be, I don't wanna say I'm a generalist. I, I've definitely created my own style of spinning, but at the same time, it's like, it's really cool to see people that keep trading their, their techniques and then they just like start working something and they go in their own direction and then, then they have their own style as well. Yeah. And I find like we have different kinds of spinners. We have um, people that spin just for their Zen. They'll mostly be playing music and it doesn't matter about their techniques. It's more about how it makes them feel. Mm -hmm. Then you have the sports the sports nunchuckers and the sports nunchuckers have high speed and crazy t tricks, right? It's super, super flashy. And then you have the festy spinners, which is usually pretty technical, really like that almost looks like geometry unfolding in front of you. It looks like a math problem that just keeps going. And then you have like the performers, which are somewhere, somewhere between a lot of those motions where they're just looking on how to make an audience cheer, clap, or be excited or feel something. I feel like those are like, there's so many different ways you can take nunchucks. And of course you have the martial artists too that just strike, 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 you know. <laughs> this is kind of cool to see all the different reasons why people spin and I'm sure there's more too. But to me, I generally see those styles when I, when I watch nunchuck videos on the internet. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, thanks again for joining on Sunday and thanks for agreeing to, to let me share this on YouTube with everybody. Yes, sir. You're welcome. See you guys next Sunday. Yeah. I'll see you all next Sunday. Okay. Yes, and if you are on the YouTube channel again, thanks for joining, joining us. I'm sure I'll see you all or talk to you all.